Welcome. Welcome, Cammie, to the Cammie City Council regular meeting October 3rd, 2012. You'd all re raise for the uh, flag salute and moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You stay standing for a moment of silence for our military personnel and diplomatic corps worldwide. Thank you. Okay, we've got a couple of proclamations <clears throat> tonight here. The first one we have is Oregon Days of, of Culture, whereas culture draws us together in common purpose, understanding, and celebration, and whereas Oregon's 1,300 arts, heritage, and humanities nonprofits, museums, libraries, Theaters, historical societies, art centers, and heritage sites are the heart of our communities. And whereas the Oregon Culture Trust presents Oregon Days of Culture, October 1st to 8th, during National Arts and Humanities Month, to encourage Oregonians to celebrate, participate, and give to Oregon culture. And whereas October 8th, 2012, marks the 10th anniversary of Oregon's innovative cultural tax credit, encouraging new public and private investment in Oregon culture. And whereas the Oregon Cultural Trust is smart public policy, like vote by mail, the bottle and beach bills, and that makes Oregon a proud thought leader nationwide. And whereas supporting culture by giving to cultural nonprofits and to the Oregon Cultural Trust is vital to preserving the past, sustaining the present, and creating the future. Now, therefore, I, Randy Carson, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Canby, do hereby proclaim October 1st through 8th, 2012 to be Oregon Days of Culture in Canby and call upon Oregonians, especially during the eight-day week, to participate in Oregon culture, to celebrate its vibrancy and depth, and to give to the arts, heritage, and humanities to ensure their future vitality, giving unto my hand this third day of October 2012 in the city of Canby, Oregon. Is there anybody here to accept this tonight? If not, we will uh, present this at a later time to them then. Okay, we have another one today also. Proclamation, Manufacturing Day. Whereas, manufacturing makes a very significant contribution to the national, state, and local economy, and whereas our community is fortunate to be the home of many world-class manufacturing companies, and whereas those manufacturing companies add to the vitality and prosperity of our community, and whereas the community wants to introduce as many people as possible to the important role played by manufacturing, and whereas October 5th is dedicated to celebrating the great work and innovation of the men and women who contribute to Canby's strong manufacturing economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Randy Carson, Mayor of the City of Canby, Oregon, do hereby proclaim October 5th, 2012, as Manufacturing Day in Canby, and urge all citizens to join in recognizing the value of our manufacturers and the importance they serve to the, to our, in our community. Given unto my hand this third day of October 2012 in the City of Canby, Oregon. And I believe we have uh, Bev. I'd like to make some statements. Um, my name is Beth Doolittle and I'm the Executive Director of the Canby Area Chamber of Commerce. The purpose of this day is to highlight the importance of manufacturing to the nation's economy and draw attention to the many rewarding, high-skilled, family-wage jobs available in the manufacturing fields. One of the challenges for manufacturing is to improve the image of manufacturing as a viable career option. option. Studies by the Nonprofit Manufacturing Institute and others show that 80% of Americans believe manufacturing is important to our economy, prosperity, standard of living, and national security. Yet only 30% would encourage their children to go into a manufacturing as a career. Mr. Weber has opened his business, Product Manufacturing, to the Hamby High School Manufacturing One class. Um, this Friday, a group of 30 students will spend some time at that business seeing firsthand what they're learning in this class. These are things that we like to see happen both for our students and for our local business. 
Being able to, pr to promote trained, skilled workforce is important to our business community. Manufacturing drives value creation, innovation, and employment throughout the country. And we want to show our community the opportunities available in manufacturing today. Our future depends on our ability to strengthen and advance this vital sector. October 5th is dedicated to celebrating the great work and innovation of the 12 million men and women who make the United States the world's largest manufacturing economy. So with that, I'd like to introduce um, Renata Mengelberg, Economic Development for the City, and Kim Parker with the Workforce Investment Council. Thank you, Beth. Um, the City of Canby has invested in creating a fertile environment for the manufacturing um, sector for many years and has paid dividends over and over. We have many long-standing um, quiet companies that are doing yeoman's work in the background. We don't hear much about them, but we really appreciate them. They're stable and they're growing. And then we welcome all of our new manufacturers that have come to Canby over the years. Especially, we've been blessed this past nine, uh, year and a half or so to have five new companies come to Canby, including um, Bold Ideas, Product Manufacturing, um, and then expansions with Shimazu and Pioneer Pump, uh, among many others. So um, as the economy picks up, we look forward to having more and more businesses come to Canby Pioneer Industrial Park. But today we're celebrating the businesses that were here, and we thank them for what they do every day and how much they c contribute to our economy. And we have several businesses here today to talk with you. So I'd like to introduce John Weber first from Product Manufacturing. I didn't know what this one had to say. <laughs> Welcome, John. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. Uh, product uh, manufacturing is a 42-year-old company. We don't have proprietary products or any of that glitzy stuff. We simply provide services. Uh, we give uh, original equipment manufacturers and fabricators and uh, others in the manufacturing sector that supply finished goods the opportunity to use us as a subcontractor to provide services with our capital investment and equipment and technical um, uh, skilled workforce so they can live with a variable cost model. They don't have to outfit their company to hit peak conditions or miss opportunities. We can take overflows. We can be a contract service provider. Uh, it's an interesting model. It's full of dynamics. You hear it called a job shop. It could be called a lot worse. Uh, it's, a, it's a constant challenge. Uh, it, it's a, it, an outstanding dynamic. Uh, the kind of uh, employee we attract is not the kind of employee that you would find in many manufacturing uh, situations. Uh, the employees that we have are the ones who really don't care where their lunch bucket's parked or <clears throat> what's happening right next to them. Their dynamic is every day is different. Uh, they're doing programming on equipment. They are working from between lathes and mills, computer controlled equipment and manual equipment. Uh, they're working with different products and different setups and different customers' requirements, different drawing sets every single day. So when we have the uh, uh, kids from the manufacturing one class over on Friday, uh, we'll make absolutely sure that uh, uh, in the tour, we give them an opportunity not only to see what we're doing, but we'll make sure that there's some association between their curriculum and the relevance of their curriculum, which I'm sure they're challenged at their age to understand, uh, but that geometry and trigonometry and computer science, uh, basic financial skills and estimating and uh, contract administration, and all that is relevant and it makes good sense and it can provide them a vital living. Any questions? I've got one, John. How, when you do go out and hire, how difficult is it to find what you're looking for? Uh, it's very challenging. Uh, right now, uh, I'm 59 and I'm the average age mm -hmm. of product manufacturing's 25 uh, employees. Uh, that scares me. Uh, we, we can't obsolete, in what we do, we can't obsolete uh, journeyman level technicians. We, we, ha we are mostly CNC, uh, but even that has a high skill level. Uh, but part of what we offer, part of our commercial bandwidth, is being able to do some very unique stuff that 
manual machining, conventional machining, yeah. uh, is included in. So we're working with Clackamas Community College. Uh, Renata was instrumental in, uh, in her time at Clackamas as well as her time uh, here. Uh, she transitioned just about the time we started looking here. So she introduced us to all the necessary people. Um, in fact, we were working with Robert, who used to sit right here in City Hall, um, and uh, working with them on intern uh, internship program, hiring uh, from their um, graduates, and trying to facilitate. We can't create, but we can facilitate uh, another generation mm -hmm. of manufacturing skilled uh, uh, workers. The, the, the workforce we have, we're, all, we're still young enough to remember most of what we learned. So uh, right now is important. It's very critical now, now that our move's done and everything else, I'd say strategically, uh, in the human resource side, the most important thing product manufacturing is going to do over the next five years is to bring another generation in, pass on as much knowledge and skills possible. Clackamas Community College will be very helpful there, but a lot of it, we're, we're going to have to do a lot of it ourselves. Well, for, for those of us who have been interested in economic development for years, we never thought we'd be here where, there, where our, our efforts would pay off and we wouldn't have people to take these skilled jobs that you have. So that's the other component, that this isn't just a theoretical proclamation. It's something that we really need to do is get people into these jobs. Because yeah. you do have to retire at some point, I suppose. You know. <laughs> it's an option. <laughs> There's only one thing after retirement, though, and that scares me. Uh, but uh, what we see is there, there's a way of doing it. I think as businesses, what you got to do is you got to accept that the public sector and schools and families aren't going to give you what generations before us received as far as a trained and skilled and diverse workforce. That's not going to happen anymore. Um, we have to do our own hunting and gathering, and that's clear. Once, once you understand that, and nobody's going to pack nuts away in the oak tree for you every winter. You've got to do it yourself. And as manufacturers, uh, manufacturers, once you understand that that's that responsibility is incumbent upon you, and you take it on, it's interesting. There's a lot of people who are willing to step up. You know, Clackamas has been a great partner. Uh, Renata and her team's been a great partner. This time with the high school. Mm -hmm. you know, five years from now, I might have one of my top young people mm -hmm. having visited Friday. Good. I don't so. know that, but yeah. I'll bank on it. Good. Thank you, John. Any other questions? I think, Colin, I think that, uh, you know, young people or younger people don't really realize that there's actually, you know, money to be made, uh, and it's a good living to, uh, to work in the manufacturing trade in uh, different places that, like, you know, you guys pay pretty good wages and uh, it does take some training to to be able to learn to do that one and you're not going to get it by you know just you know sitting home reading reading books or or being on a, a Nintendo or whatever you need to get a little more you know time and and grade working on different things to to be ready to take a, on a job like you guys you have to train people we at Columbia helicopters we have about 400 people in the building there and there's always people coming in new to train and it, and it is a good occupation it's not an old dirty occupation where you're going home and you know have to take two showers a night to, to get you know get the grime off. It's a, it's a fairly clean operation. Your guys are, are definitely one of the clean shops around that I've seen too. So oh, heaven sure. knows we try right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> a, I think it, like I said, it's a good place to, yeah. to learn to, to, to skills and to make a good living over the years. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. And also, just so people understand uh, the, the economies of this, you know, there's Pioneer Pumps and others uh, that are all participating in this, uh, but a, a skilled uh, young professional who has, who's coachable, who can um, apply, learn knowledge, and keep himself on task. Um, heck, well, I have an example of a guy who runs our, our new horizontal uh, CNC mill. Uh, this year, with overtime, they'll approach eighty thousand dollars. And his wife doesn't agree, but that's a living wage. <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, in this economy, it's very good. So. Great. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Good evening. I'm Kim Parker. I'm the executive director of the Workforce Investment Council, and 
you have taken my speech, really. Uh, I wanted to speak briefly about the workforce and the need for the emerging workforce. And I'm not going to um, say it because you've heard it directly out of somebody who lives it every single day. So I do want to share with you some statistics, though, in the Tri-County, uh, Portland Metro area, and Clark County. So sort of the labor shed with which we are, of which we are a part. Between uh, 2010 and 2012, is it, it is expected that manufacturing will add 5,400 new jobs. Those are new jobs. Those are jobs that do not exist today. Those are not <coughs> people who are retiring. Those are brand new jobs. If you add in replacement jobs, so the folks who are retiring, we're over 11,000 jobs. So that's something that I think we need to continually be aware of and remind people of. Our emerging workforce and what happens in the high schools are key. This fact that this tour is happening on Friday, I hope, is the one, one of many for our kids here in Canby and, frankly, throughout the whole Portland metro area to become more familiar. So exactly what you were saying, Mayor, um, kids get to see and experience firsthand. The partnership with um, Clackamas Community College. We also have a partnership with Clackamas Community College. We fund much of the activities that they do there, and they get it. So I am confident that we will be able to meet the demands of the workforce, but I think that as a society and as a community, we can't do enough to continue to talk about the emerging workforce needs in this industry because um, product manufacturing is not unique. The workers in this industry are aging and they will retire eventually once their uh, retirement accounts get back up to where they want them to be. And then we as a country are going to be in trouble if we don't have other bodies who are willing to take the, uh, the training necessary and get the on-the-job training that's required to get into those jobs. So with that, any questions? I want to introduce two of our uh, Workforce Investment Council board members that are here with us today, Jerry Turner of Pioneer Pump and Bob Dagnan of Package Containers. So who wants to go first? Oh, yes, Jerry? <laughs> Good evening, Turner. Good to see you back. I'm Jerry Turner with Pioneer Pump. <coughs> um, started the business 14 years ago. Um, we've been one of the shining lights up until about three months ago. Um, we had 50 employees, I think, in 2010, the start of 2010, and we grew that to about 100 here in Canby. And we just had an eight-person layoff, which is probably back in August, which is probably the worst thing that I hate to do as a business owner. Um, we only had two in the 14 years, and the previous one was eight people. And, you know, both of those are very difficult. Uh, it's hard on the people. Uh, fortunately, most of the layoffs are younger people who hopefully will take the opportunity to get some additional training and education and hopefully find some career paths that will, you know, help them along the way. Um, I am a board member of the Clackamas County uh, Clackamas Community College Foundation. I'll be the chair in 2015. So I'm very strong proponent of education. I think Kim does a tremendous job in helping um, train the workforce and getting an adequate workforce. Um, we've both been involved in CASE, Clackamas Academy of Industrial Science, and I'm on the foundation board of that institution and also on the main board. And we started that three years ago. Uh, we actually worked for three years prior to being able to start it. And the first year we had about 50 students and, and it's an alternative to um, high school. So it's a district alternative high school. Mm -hmm. And the second year we had about 84 students. This year we have 140 some students and we're in the King School that, that the school district shut down. We have half of that school this year. We're looking at um, possibly building our own facility in the not too distant future, probably somewhere between the Oregon City High School and the community college because we're tied so closely to the community college and the students um, also get to participate in athletics at the, at the Oregon City High School. Um, so try to, I'm a great example of someone who doesn't learn through 
um, the traditional uh, learning processes. And I think the more opportunities we give kids to learn um, and the different ways we present things, uh, the better chance they have of being successful. Um, our students um, typically have passed all of their requirements by the time they're sophomores. And we were just talking yesterday in a meeting that um, the students, well, some of our upper level um, higher skilled students will also achieve an associate's degree at the same time that they get their high school degree. And I think that's phenomenal. And we're, we're trying to figure out ways to fund that so that they don't have to spend any of their own money to get the college credits for books and what have you. Um, so far we've been able to do that and we're just trying to figure out ways that we can do that in the future. But um, Pioneer Pump for the future, just one little brief comment as we're looking at doing some major expansion into new markets. I'm very excited about the next six months and I fully expect that about three or four months from now we'll be back uh, cranking out seven or eight million dollars a month in shipments. So, anyway, I really appreciate this recognition and thank you very much. Well, I definitely like to recognize you because you've been a, a you know good solid you know foundation business in our town and you did not move away when you had a chance to. You stayed in our new industrial park that you know I was one of the people that helped get that going you know 10 12 years ago with a vision of companies like yours staying in town and being a big part of, uh, of this community, and I know you are, along with everybody else, but thanks a lot, Jerry. Well, Appreciate I, that. I tell people that this is a great place to be, too. Definitely. Thank is. you. Thanks, Jerry. Thank well, good evening, everybody. One thing about being here is I don't have to watch a presidential debate, so <laughs> I am very grateful for that. Uh, well, we're afraid that our uh, ratings are suffering tonight because of that. <laughs> I think your ratings are going sky high. <laughs> <laughs> Package Containers um, is a 65-year-old company. We were founded in 1947, um, and we have been in Canby since 1970. So. Uh, we are, uh, relatively speaking, a, uh, a well-established company in this community. And uh, when uh, uh, Kim and I talked about uh, coming here tonight, um, I did a little bit of uh, research. Uh, we have 55 people in our company, uh, 45 of, of whom are located here, um, and roughly half of those uh, our Canby residents uh, are uh, Milano or Canby, and I'll say it's environs. Um, if you include Aurora and Hubbard and, and down toward Woodburn, then it becomes almost 80% of, uh, of our company. And so when I think about uh, Canby and I think about our company, I think about what's important about that. And a company, as, as everyone here knows, is only as good as its people. Um, and we are very grateful um, that for the last five years we have been able to maintain, we've been able to grow, uh, we've been able to maintain profitability um, and never miss a payroll. Uh, and we've, we've even been able to, to add people uh, to our company and, and to our staff. Um, a couple of thanks go out because uh, I heard from a politician recently that we didn't do it ourselves. So um, therefore, I'd like to talk about some of the help that we have received. Um, and the help has come really in, in terms of helping our people uh, get better training, uh, help them to learn how to be better managers. Um, we had a program that uh, uh, was partially funded by the uh, county, uh, came to us through the community college and through the help of, of WICO. Um, and I can't say enough for the efforts that uh, go on here at Clackamas County uh, between um, the county, between the community college, uh, WICO, and the different organizations at meeting the needs of the companies where they are and helping them get from that point to the next point. 
Um, we had four people in our company um, that had been with our company an average of 15 years. That was their average tenure. Um, and had never thought about a leadership position, never thought about a supervisory position. And through uh, WICO and the community college, we established a, a CAMI leadership program that had many people, not only from our company, but from other companies, a class of 20 some odd, um, that took six months to discuss leadership um, and actually received uh, college uh, credit at the end. And there was a very happy, very tearful graduation at the Canby Community College. These four people, four ladies, as it turned out, uh, at our company had never thought um, that they would ever have any college credit or never rise to any supervisory position within our company or any others. And they have been uh, of inestimable value to us um, as we seek to grow and expand and uh, uh, remain a, a profitable business. So when you honor manufacturing, you're honoring the people in the manufacturing and you're really honoring the people who live and work and make up the Can the Can Canby community. So I just personally want to thank you very much. Thank you for being part of that. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Also, thank you for your patience and flexibility as we uh, did our road work around your business this year. Uh, appreciated your feedback and help on that. Well, like I told you, I, I think that that's part of making the community a better place. Um, it used to uh, really get to me when I'd see people walking um, through the fairgrounds, coming back from doing their shopping and, and bringing their goods home, uh, carrying them, walking, and having to go through um, the, the rain and the, uh, the mud. And, and now they have a, a safe street, safe sidewalks, and uh, it's very good to see. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I would just like to make a yeah. comment if I yeah. could. I just I want to thank everybody who came tonight. Um, I think it's absolutely fantastic that we have the chamber and the city and county agencies all working together to promote not just Canby businesses, but all the man the opportunities available in manufacturing. So I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I think it's amazing. Chief Collins, I also like to thank those who are here this evening. I think this is a story. I hope that young people would be able to tune in tonight and listen. Last few years, we've been talking about people saying we got to go into high tech, get computer training, all this stuff. You know, and the jobs are out there in the high tech, the money is out there, and so forth. And now we find out that manufacturing is coming back, and I think a lot of the kids don't realize that there's opportunities in the manufacturing. I appreciate the comments that are made tonight, showing that there is potential. And many of those times, if you're well trained, you don't have to leave town. There might be a job available to you here. And I think it's exciting to know that. Uh, I have a youngster that, or a grandson that's taking welding class, and I keep showing him all this literature. I says, hang in there. There's jobs out there. Hang in there. You know, because sometimes they kind of get discouraged. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a great story to tell the young people, and I wish the great success on uh, Friday when you show those kids just what is available here. Because I think we're close to it up here, but even at that, I've learned some things tonight that I didn't even realize, you know, we have here in town. And so it, we really appreciate what you've done. And years ago when we formed that industrial park, just prior to that, uh, we had annexations being voted down all the time. And people kept telling us, we don't have jobs, so why are we putting the houses in? But once I started shifting, and the last annexation went through, and I don't know what the future ones will be, but I guess a lot of them were slowed down because of the economy. But people now see that, yeah, there's work available here. And if it wasn't so high price in our, in our houses, that we probably have more people who would want to live in town. But again, thank you. Yes. Um, I just wanted to share one, one more thing, and that is that I, I told Kim, um, we are forever looking for good people with uh, a skill set that is based more on knowing which end of the socket wrench is which and how to use a pair of pliers and a Phillips screwdriver than how to get the, the top score on a Nintendo game. And we were very fortunate um, that we were able to hire a young man today, uh, actually this week, he starts Monday, 
who had been laid off from Blue Heron. He had been with Blue Heron for 20 years as a machine operator at Blue Heron. He had taken advantage of two of the educational programs available through WICO at the community college, welding and I believe uh, uh, learning how to be a uh, uh, skilled millwright uh, and was able to bring those skills with him to our company and he's starting with us Monday and he lives here in Canby. Mm -hmm. So it's a Canby resident who had something very bad happen to him that was able to take advantage of the support and the uh, facilities and the organizations that we have here and was able to bring that, those skills back to Canby, back to a company in Canby that is going to help us tremendously. So mm -hmm. I wanted to share that with you. And uh, that's the type of thing that we're really grateful for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Mayor? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to be there? Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I think it's real interesting that there's four companies represented here, extremely diverse product line, but they're also in different parts of the city. Right. There's four really distinct areas that these businesses are from. And I don't know if that was just uh, accidental, but uh, I find that interesting. Kim, that, Kim uh, probably did that. Uh, Kim and Bev really yeah, yeah. worked that out. Scott right, so. hiding back there. Yeah, yeah. Scott's back. Yeah, so I thought that just was uh, well, I, just, I just wanted, you know, like I said, I want to make a comment that uh, just in the last two years uh, from talking with uh, Renata, that we've uh, had about 25 new companies with different uh, different backgrounds, uh, manufacturing, more of them than any of them, but about 200 workers have already come into the community in the last two years. And uh, the Canby uh, Industrial Park, Pioneer Industrial Park, is, is going to be a big player in that one. But like you said, there's other places in town that people can uh, can put a business, and we, we want everybody to be able to have a spot. And Renata has done a really good job of, of melding uh, buildings that were empty with uh, companies that needed a place to come into and being a, a real spokesman for Canby and the e economic development and get, bringing the jobs to town. So thanks a lot for staff to do that. Great. So appreciate that one. And uh, we have more land available. There's several hundred more acres in the industrial park. So anybody that's looking for land, it's not just in the metro, downtown metro area or across the river, come on out to Canby and we'll find a spot for you. Thank you, guys. And, uh, One last oh, thing. Go ahead, Jerry. We have our um, distributor meeting next week, so there'll be about 40 or 50 distributors from all over the world that will come here for a few days to be with us in our facility. So it's a uh, good time to showcase candy. Appreciate that. I'm sure uh, Bev will work on that one and uh, with yeah. everybody. And uh, I believe uh, you wanted to get a photo. Well, you're, you're, then you're well. <laughs> Sitting in the middle of getting over it. Yeah. Are we gonna, okay, are we I don't know, but you'd be facing <laughs> one direction. <laughs> or, or the other. <laughs> look at me. Okay, look at you. Okay. Okay. I have to do that. I have to keep okay. these guys in line. Look at Kim. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, and another one. Pop right One, two, three. Thank you. That's good. That one and have it with your uh, business alliance group. So appreciate okay, it all. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Again, thank, thank you. We'll see you later. All right. Thank good. you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Make sure you guys see you. Thank you. We'll see you later. This is definitely nice to have the diversity of businesses in town so that we're not really locked into any one type of uh, economy or when, if one economy goes down a little bit that the other businesses can hopefully hold on and Camby will be a better place for everybody. So thank you. Kim? Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. And you're all invited for a tour if you're ever over near our place. Ooh. Okay. Very Excellent. Okay, now we have uh, communications. Uh, none. Okay. <laughs> Citizen input and community announcement. If there's anybody that would like to come up at this time. <laughs> Got anything to say, Ken? <laughs> everybody, please. <laughs> okay. Um, mayor's business. Uh, 
had another busy last two weeks here. Uh, on Thursday, September 20th, I attended the Adult Center uh, lunch. Uh, on Tuesday, the 25th of September, I was in Salem at a uh, Oregon Passenger High Speed Rail meeting that we're basically just trying to make sure we're we know what's going on uh, as they start talking statewide on uh, high speed rail, if it's going to actually happen or not is a different issue, but uh, you know, we have a rail line running right through Canby. Everybody knows that, I'm sure. So uh, <laughs> we want to make sure we're a partner in uh, whatever happens, uh, that things that come through our community. Uh, Wednesday 26th, I attended the North Clackamas Chamber of Commerce County Commissioners Forum. Uh, all the commissioners were at the forum and they were all taking questions so that was a fairly lively two hours that I stayed for that. Um, then on Thursday the 27th, uh, Greg Ellis and myself appeared at the uh, Clackamas County Commissioners board meeting and received a thank you for from all the commissioners for installing the sidewalks and the new pavement in front of uh, the event center last summer before the fair so they were really thankful that we had that. Uh, it really made a difference uh, on the fair attendance, I believe, and the safety of uh, the p people that were going to the fair. I don't know if you have any comments on that one, but uh, no, I, okay, no, it, you know, it's a very good project we did, and uh, it was very, we worked very good to, together with the uh, Clackamas County and with the fair people to uh, make it happen. Um, then on Friday the 28th, uh, I was in uh, Salem for the League of Oregon City meeting with uh, most of the other counselors. And let's see here, the, oh, on Saturday then, went to the Adult Center Salmon Bake, and the Oregon Pitch Pipers were partnership with that one, and it was a very good dinner. We had about 70 or 80 people that were there for uh, helping the Adult Center on their fundraiser. And then uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, or Tuesday, I went to the chamber lunch, and uh, they had intern uh, with the uh, local businesses, which is kind of partially with the manufacturing you know, I think that will, down the road, we'll be able to tie that uh, school internships with uh, some of this manufacturing. And also, Greg, uh, Ellis and I did a uh, OCTS Talk of the Town show uh, talking about things that are going on in Canby and what we've been doing for the last year as a council and uh, the things that have been happening in the community. So that's will be on several times uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks or several times a week during the next couple of weeks anyway. So. Good. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also went to the Chamber Luncheon yesterday, uh, but the week prior, I went to a neighborhood open house at the 13th Avenue Reservoir. I've never been to a water tower open house before. That was quite interesting. They, Matt was telling me how they're going to wrap the, the reservoir with, I don't remember what it was, but cable. he told us the cable, cable, and he was telling me how what the posts were there to keep it from unraveling if something happened and it was a very interesting story I never thought I would ever have to go to an open house for a water tower but I did I can put that down as something I've done I also went to a Main Street uh, promotion meeting there were lots of exciting things the little new additions to our Halloween festivities this year so watch for some promotional items coming out about that and um, I also went to the League of Oregon Cities conference Thursday through Saturday I went on Thursday by myself but anyway lots of uh, interesting classes that we went to a lot of information about Facebook pages we'll see what happens and um, I have a library board meeting on the 16th I will be attending and the school board meeting tomorrow night that's my liaison report but I do have a couple of community announcements since Councillor Hodson's not here I thought I would mention that the chamber is having the shred it day at the Clackamas County Fairgrounds event center excuse me tomorrow uh, from 12 to noon first two boxes for shredding is free then it's five dollars a box thereafter and on Sunday morning from 830 to 1130 the American Legion auxiliary will be hosting a community breakfast six dollars for adults three dollars for children the proceeds benefit the veterans food baskets and that concludes and the words of Councillor Dale <laughs> yeah, as far as liaisons I don't have a report on the historic society but on the uh, transit uh, the transit now has a dollar fare per ride started the 1st of October. And also those who use the transit quite frequently can get a pass at a reduced price and those are available now at the transit office. 
Uh, I was one of them that went to the League of Oregon Cities meeting, and we're fortunate that it was in Salem rather than being in Bend. <laughs> so we could attend it, and uh, three of the counselors and their city administrator was attending there, and I think even the attorney, I think, did attend some sessions on your day. Didn't? Not this, okay. not that particular. Okay. Anyway, I know some went on on Thursday. I didn't. We were two of us went, or three of us went down on uh, Friday and spent two. Beautiful sunny days inside a hotel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's exciting not only to see the, the different classes that are offered, but the, the idea is to spread around and dialogue with other city representatives and say, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? What pitfalls? We're thinking of doing such and such. What do you think? And they tell us, well, we're doing this, and these are some things that we would change if we were. So we brought a lot of that information back and shared with uh, other departments. Um, Basically, I think that's it. Um, oh, by the way, the chamber meeting was excellent yesterday. We had uh, the high school talking about their uh, program they have of putting students in the, in the second year into a uh, exploratory or a job share jobs in Canby. So if the youngster says, I'm interested in maybe being, well, like one felt, so I want to be a fireman. Okay, so they worked it out so he could be uh, job shouting the fireman. Well. In his testimony yesterday, he said, well, I found out later that there's not many fires in Canby. Most of it's medical. <laughs> so it means i got to go back to school and be a paramedic, which he says that's fine. So anyway, this is nice. And then during their junior year, they can be uh, intern. And so this is a real opportunity because I think back that when I was in college, students that had gone through and said, I want to teach agriculture, and they get down in the do some expert to do some teaching, student teaching in their fourth year, and get out in the classroom facing the students, they say, I don't want to do this rest of my life. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's some real fortunate they got these new programs now that the students can find out ahead of time as to what they would like to do. So excellent program, and I think they're working more and more with businesses and, and looking for more opportunities for students. So that includes mine. Well, I went to the League of Cities uh, meeting as well, came back with uh, some ideas um, in terms of social networking and trying to get some Facebook action here in the city. Uh, but the coolest thing was uh, two cities the same size as uh, can be coming up to me and saying, uh, how do you guys do it? I hear there's a buzz going on. I hear you've got uh, industry moving in. I hear you have jobs. What are you guys doing? So uh, that was that was extremely cool. Uh, tomorrow I'm heading down to Corvallis for uh, the Oregon Main Street um, uh, program, which also has a component in it tomorrow on uh, social media engagement of, of citizens. And I appreciate Tracy for stepping up and uh, helping out the uh, Main Street program with, with her participation in that. And that's my report. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was uh, gone on vacation for the last council meeting, contributing to the economy of a particularly small municipality in Southern California <laughs> that has a castle. Anyway, it is the happiest place on earth. Uh, <laughs> just ask American Express, yes. Uh, uh, so uh, I uh, was not able to report that I attended the library 75th birthday celebration. Uh, definitely the most pleasant, tough decision yet to make on council, deciding the chocolate cookie winner. Mm -hmm. uh, my goodness, mm -hmm. that was a, a very uh, carbohydrate-ridden day. Oh, Excellent gosh. cooks in Canby. Also uh, attended the Canby visioning meeting, uh, and oh. along with our city administrator, I was hoping for 30, and my goodness, standing room only. Uh, what a great, great kickoff. Looking forward to more of those. It's wonderful to see folks turning out to plan the future of our city. On the Canby utility front, uh, the reservoir progress is going very well. If you, anyone is welcome to go onto YouTube and search for Canby Utility Reservoir and look for yours truly and you'll find a fun video there of that huge machine going around the reservoir spraying concrete oh, on good. the side. You have to be a bit of a nerd to really mm -hmm. enjoy it, I'll but it's, it it's, it's fun to see. And the Knightsbridge substation is progressing along. The county anticipates six more weeks of permitting, and then they can get going. And that concludes. I thought you were going to say I six more wanna... weeks of winter. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I wasn't sure if, uh, how many other people were going to talk about the visioning uh, meeting that uh, Greg basically championed and got going after we talked with the different people to say we need to get something going. So I do want to 
thank the community for having almost 100 people show up for the visioning, uh, for the first visioning meeting that we had down at the uh, Canby Police Facility, at the new, uh, new, new community room down there. As you said, that uh, we were thinking 30, 40 people. I think you had about 60 chairs. And we were packing chairs in and, and standing room only by the time we got done. I think it was very, very well done. And uh, we're going to have uh, some, a couple of uh, smaller groups, I believe. Greg, do you want to do a, give a little bit of history on what we're going to do? I can for do that? it right now if you'd like. I was going to do that under new business or my report, but I'd like to do that. I met with the facilitators I introduced at the visioning meeting uh, Stephanie Murphy, Delane Johnson, Mary Kerr and Susie Myers and uh, they're going to be the facilitators we've got four main themes we've uh, uh, broken it down all of the sticky notes that everybody did we've got it into four main themes or at least we've maybe put two themes in under one uh, just to try to make it uh, not so much uh, so many people or small meetings and we got together today and we have decided on the small meeting dates and I'll be sending out uh, tomorrow a save the date. And our next big meeting uh, that I've asked Mr. Olson to, uh, Tom Olson to facilitate will be on November 15th, which is a Thursday. And that's going to be at the uh, Cuts Force. And Cuts Force. We can't do it at uh, Hope Village. And it just seemed like that, I'm going to be gone the week before that. The week after is Thanksgiving. I don't want to lose the energy, so I don't want to go into December. So anyway, that's why we're doing it on November 15th. Um, and then tomorrow I'll talk about the small meetings and uh, try to get uh, those those dates out. I'm, I know it's, no, it's October 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, but there's one the previous week, the 18th, which is a Thursday. Those will all be, those are smaller groups, and they'll all be at the police facility. Okay, great. That's already booked. That's already done, as is Cuts Force on the 15th of November. So uh, that will be coming out tomorrow. I think you got an email from me yesterday, and it showed all of the different uh, sticky notes and the categories. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I'll be sending something out. And thank you to all the staff. Renata put a lot of time in that today. Laney has put a lot of time in transposing. Kim uh, did all of the work on getting the names, addresses, telephone numbers, and et cetera, uh, off of the handwritten. And that must have been just a little hard. And I want to say that email that I sent out last night, I got three non-deliverables. That's wow. pretty good. Great. So I was really excited about that. And uh, they were easy to find and uh, fix. So getting that stuff out. And the facilitators I met with today, they're still really excited about it. We've gotten some calls, and I think people are really excited about it. Thank you for being there, and uh, I'm hoping we can get more people at that next big meeting. I'm thinking let's spread the word and try to get twice as many uh, in the in the venue. Okay, so. Real quick, Greg, uh, who what uh, gr uh, who are you going to try to get at the smaller groups? What's the uh, are you going to be calling people to, to be part of the, uh, of the of the four groups that are coming up on 28? Yeah, the what 18th I'm, uh, the 18th, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. What I'll be doing is sending out that email. I'll be sending out the groups as they were broken out, um, what we just finalized today, and asking people to choose a selection. Or we want to do it, and that's what we're doing on four different days. If you want to come to more than one of them, you know, please come. And we'll be sending out reminders between now and the 18th and 22nd. So it's we'll not really an RSVP. It's just whoever shows up at that meeting. You'll yep, we're going to do. Participate. Yep, we're going to okay. do whoever wants to show up. But I would love to have a full room again, even on the small breakouts. Great. I think it would be, good. Think be really good. Yeah, uh, I thought Tracy might mention about the Tuesday night uh, meeting at the library. This last week we had a speaker to mention that uh, talked about the WPA. Oh. And uh, how it was built, Mount Hood, the uh, you know, Mount um, Hood Lodge, and uh, went in looking f film that showed the construction process and so forth. Okay. Also, this uh, facility where City Hall was built by WPA, 20, 1927, right. I think it was. This next week, they have one on the Canby Women's Civic Club, and they were responsible for one of the things was planting all the trees along First Street, and. Uh, so it would be interesting to hear from Peggy Zaylor, who's a local historian on that. 6.30 at the library next Tuesday.
Okay, I guess that's it then. Or the last thing, all those meeting times are 7 p.m. Starting 7 p.m. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Well, yes. Okay. Move that we pass the consent agenda. Move the adoption of the minutes of September 10, 2012, City Council Planning Commission Work Session. Minutes of September 19, 2012, City Council Regular Meeting. A new liquor license for D. Mary's, authentic Mexican food, appointment of Heather Steach to the library uh, board, and the, the term expires June 30th, 2014. Okay, can I get a second? Oh, second. Sorry. Okay, it's been moved by uh, oh, Councillor Daniels, seconded by uh, Councillor Hensley to uh, adopt the consent agenda, approval of minutes of the September 10th, 2012 City Council and Planning Commission work session, approval of minutes of the September 19th, 2012 City Council regular meeting, uh, the uh, new outlet liquor license for DeMary's Authentic Mexican Food, and uh, appointment of Heather Steach to the Canby Public Library Board for a term to expire on June 30th, 2014. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 4 0. The next item we have is Resolution 1144. This is approving IG with the Canby Urban Renewal Agency regarding transfer of tax increment revenues and proceeds to the city for the purpose of paying obligation bond financing. Great. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is simply an obligation saying there, uh, an agreement with the Urban Renewal Agency that uh, tax increment financing can come to pay the obligation. This was done uh, last year for the police station, so it's um, the same the same IG. It's just an agreement. It was uh, tough negotiations. The uh, Urban Renewal Agency is a contentious bunch, but uh, I prevailed, I think. And <laughs> anyway, that's that's all it is. It's just. Uh, it's a resolution or an IGA, and you'll see the same identical one one week from tonight at the Urban Renewal Agency. Okay. And it just uh, just says that we can accept, the council can accept the money, and that uh, the Urban Renewal Agency will uh, send those monies over for this obligation. Great. Mr. Chairman, I'm moving past the resolution 1144, a resolution to see of Canby, Clackamas County, Oregon. Approving an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Canby Urban Renewal Agency, Clackamas County, Oregon, regarding the transfer of tax increment finance uh, revenues and proceeds to the city for the purpose of paying obligation bond financing. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved by Councilor Daniel, seconded by Councilor Parker to adopt resolution number 1144, a resolution of the City of Canby, Clackamas County, Oregon. Approving an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Canby Urban Renewal Agency, Clackamas County, Oregon, regarding the transfer of tax increment revenues and proceeds to the city for the purpose of paying obligation bond financing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes 4-0. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, new business. Uh, New business now. Now we've taken your new business away from you. Okay. Any citizen ministries, business and staff reports? Well, I just I would like to reiterate on the visioning. Please tell friends and family and everybody, agencies, whoever you would like to see there. The more, the merrier. I think. The more we can get there, the better. Um, citizen input. Um, just a reminder that the um, Chamber and the Canby Herald are doing the um, Candidates Forum next week, Tuesday. It will be televised. Um, it will be held at Hope Village at 6.30. So um, a couple of you up here and in the audience will be there. So um, hopefully everybody will come out. We'll take some audience questions if um, there, are, there are some there that um, have some things that they would like to have answered. So, Kimby Herald Candidates Forum, October 9th, um, 6.30 at Hope Village. Bev, is, yes. is the Chamber co-sponsoring with uh, the Herald the uh, Chile event this weekend? No, the or they do that themselves. Okay, yeah. because no one's mentioned that, but we yeah, also, have, right. a, that is we also have an 11 event. 11 o'clock till 3 o'clock, I believe, Yeah, uh, no, once tomorrow. the Chile's gone, Saturday. For Saturday, excuse mm -hmm. me, Saturday. That's yeah. right. I forgot. Yeah. At Thriftway, in, in the parking lot outside. So. It's definitely worth going for the chili. Yeah. All you can eat. Yep. So, that's all. Okay. 
uh, action review. You have approved the consent agenda and you've adopted resolution 1144. Uh, no exactly. Exactly. Just doesn't sound like that much when you were saying <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. It's being moved by Councilor Daniel, <laughs> seconded by Councilor Hensley to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, Cammie. Thank you.